going. Okay, welcome everyone to the June 1st community call for chaos. We're very, very happy to see all of you here. Um, this is technically the first uh, weekly meeting of the month. So we usually try to do a quick roundup of um, what's going on with all the working groups. Um, so that's on the agenda. If we don't have much to report, that's also cool. No big deal. Um, we put the, I'll put the minutes in the chat one more time, just in case if you feel like adding your name, I will also add my name because I did not do that yet. Um, we would appreciate that very much. And we can go ahead and get started with the first item. So we just want to mention that we are starting our office hours, we, we're calling them, for lack of a better term, uh, next Monday. They will happen every Monday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. U.S. Central, which is Chicago time. Um, and you can just join the Zoom, uh, the, the regular Chaos Zoom chat if you uh, have any questions or if you're new to the project and you want to just have a place to um, to ask those questions and it not be in a in a group of you know 12 15 people totally fine um, so Matt and Sean and I will be hosting those we also have a sign up sheet if you are already a member of the community and you would like to take one of those uh, Mondays that would be amazing um, so there's the link there in the in the minutes thank you for sharing those too by the way Sean um, I'm always really not good at sharing my screen so I appreciate when it's, it's, have my hard, like that. <laughs> it's hard when you're facilitating to do both. It is. It is for me anyway. I don't know about everybody, but it yeah. is for me. Um, just kind of throws too. me off. So anyway, thank you, Sean. And also thank you sure. for recording and thank you for posting the minutes. So <laughs> basically, pleasure. you're just my doing pleasure. all my jobs today. I'm awake today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, uh, if you would like to sign up, there's a sheet there. Uh, feel free to just add your name. And if you don't mind putting your email address. That would be great. And then I can add you, I'll send an invite to you uh, for your own calendar, just to make sure that you have that on your calendar as well. Um, does anyone have questions about that? My only thought was, <clears throat> Sophia had brought it up last week, that as we run these over time, that if we're starting to hear recurring things, that we just make sure that we capture that as part of Obviously, we have a, and fixing it, whatever it might be, you know. Yeah, I love, I love that idea. Um, actually, I love it just from the beginning, um, because I think that that would be an interesting thing to keep track of is, you know, even just like how many people come, you know, I mean, we are in the business of metrics, I guess. So I would really like to be, I would be interested in, in just kind of tracking that and, and what topics come up and what questions come up from the very beginning. So um uh, somebody could add an action item for me. I can set that sheet up or that doc up. Maybe I'll add the uh, the number of people who pop in to the spreadsheet that we have for sign up. Just, just as yeah, I'll just okay. do it right now. I'll just create okay. that document and cross link it out of that document. Thank you, Matt. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Uh, is there anything else that we should be keeping track of for those? Okay, well, if anyone thinks of anything, just let me know and we will definitely add it to the sheet. Um, I'd rather add it sooner than later, just so we have more data from the beginning. So that'd be great. Okay, if there's no more questions about that, we can go ahead and move on. Awesome, all right. Um, the next thing we wanted to let you know is uh, we made a few changes to the uh, getting started with uh, contributing to open source uh, slash auger workshops that Sean is running. Um, we added one on June 8th, which is a week from today. On It's one of the basic ones on just getting set up and configuring your computer, getting ready to um, contribute uh, for, from, the, from the start. So we just wanted to add another one of those in um, the next one we had was not until the end of July. So we decided to add one in for next Tuesday morning. And that will run from 7.30 a.m. U.S. Central Chicago time to 9.30 U.S. Central Chicago time. And I think I put the, yes, I did put the registration there. If you would like to sign up for that, um, that would be awesome. Sean, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I, I 
decided to do another getting started with your computer and, and programming, which really applies to any of our, our software and the chaos project, but uh, more generally to get newcomers um, off, off of start with a lot of the tools that we have, you know, how to configure your environment. And I think it's especially useful with some Google Summer Code students uh, onboarding to our projects now. <clears throat> Sean, are you recording these and sharing them out afterward? Um, I have done some that way, and I have done others that the recording wouldn't be useful because it ends up being very individualized. So I think in this case, I will prepare enough material so that the beginning of the recording is um, just sort of a straight out lecture kind of a thing. And then I'll leave the recording on for any troubleshooting that's individualized. So yeah, uh, I, think I haven't been real consistent. Start to share afterwards, so just thinking. Yeah, no, it's a really good, really good idea. It, um, it hasn't always, and I think Elizabeth and I are sort of, uh, we've been shaping these and learning from the experience of them. So um, yeah, I think, I think this would be a good one to record. Um, the other change to those is we are going to need to reschedule the June 19th one. Um, we are, I don't think we have a date yet for that, do we, Sean? No, I'm um, communicating with a couple of people who signed up for it. Okay, um, perfect. So uh, if you were planning on signing up and you hadn't yet, um, please do not do that <laughs> because it's not going to happen on that day. So you will be all alone by yourself. But we will definitely let you know when that gets rescheduled. All right, anything else about these workshops, questions, comments, anything else, any feedback? We're gonna move the, the June 19th one to June 10th, by the way. So efficient with the meetings, I love it. So yes, if you're planning on going to the June 19th one, show up on June 10th instead, that would be great. That's gonna be a busy week for you, Sean. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know the feeling. Okay. Um, so the next item on the list is um, we can go ahead and just do working working group updates. I don't think we had anything else. And I don't think uh, the Google Summer of Code students really have any updates yet. Would we're still in the statement? bonding. Yeah, we're still in the bonding period. Okay. So we'll probably add that. Um, if any Google, Google Summer of Code students are on the call, um, we'll probably add that as a, as a recurring re agenda item every week, just so you can touch base and let us know what you're working on and how's it, how it's going. Um, but obviously we'll skip this week because there's it's pr still pretty early in the process. So. Yeah, actually, can I, can I say something on that? I just not, a, the, not at all. No. Please, please. Go, go, Matt, go before, before um, you, you get... Okay, so um, just in the past many years, we've always asked our Google Summer of Code students to blog about mm -hmm. their work, and I don't see why there would be any change in that this year. So I just like to put that out there that if you're mentoring uh, Google Summer of Code students, or if you are a Google Summer of Code student on this call right now, uh, we've always used blogging in the past. And I think Google, the Summer of Code program, really likes that as well. And so it's, yeah. it's just a nice habit to try to build in for everyone. That's it. And to add to that, um, then if you feel like at, um, adding that to the, or sending it out through the mailing list, um, that's always appreciated as well, because there's a lot of people, obviously, who are on the mailing list and aren't able to make the calls. Um, so we can, you can um, like broadcast it a little bit that way. And also we can share it on Twitter. If you um, tweet it, uh, just let us know. We'll retweet it from the Chaos Twitter account as well. So we want to help you uh, have some visibility into your work as well. Um, it just kind of helps everybody. And we're super interested in seeing what you're working on. So. And I will say for the students on here and mentors, I guess, we've never cared about the platform. So whatever, we've had variability yeah. in that. So it's been media, yeah, medium has been fairly popular, but people have done all kinds of things. If you don't want to set up your own blog, you're welcome to blog through the chaos, the chaos blog as well. Yeah. And I, I can help with that if, if you want. Careful what you wish for. There's, I think, six students this year. Thank you, Kevin, for adding that. That's a great point. 
Do our students have any questions about that? Or mentors, I should say. I do not. All right. Um, I have we'll go question. ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So the blogs are going to be like weekly blogs. They're like weekly, yeah. Okay. And is there any limitation like word limit or something specific that you would like to include? No, it's a blog. Some and storage specific. is cheap. Um, I think. <laughs> I think what you what we look for you to include are reflections on the technical work that you're doing and how it's connected to the work of the chaos community. So in some some okay. weeks, the descriptions students provide, especially at the beginning, are often very technical. And as we move through the summer, they start to be more and more connected to the work of chaos writ large. Okay. Thanks. Well, well, um, I'll, I'll go ahead. track down. I'll track down. Uh, I think Venu had done a really nice job mm -hmm. blogging. I'll track his down and just put it in as a total example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. He did do a nice job. Thank you, Matt. That's what I was going to say that too. So I'm glad you spoke up first because now you get to do that. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> no, I, I said I'll help. I'll have somebody track down. <laughs> okay. You must have misheard Fair my enough. first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I think we're ready to go on to the working group updates. Um, so first off is the DEI working group. And um, the first one is we did have a new metric for release. I think we mentioned it here on the call before, but um, documentation discoverability has been released into the continuous um, release process. Continuous release process, is that right? Um, so you can go look at it and make some comments on it if you have any. And then um, the next update is that the, we kind of rearranged our focus areas um, and they are listed there on Sean's screen in the agenda. Um, Matt, I don't. I was not part of those conversations, so I don't know if you or someone else who was has anything to add to that, or some reasoning, or like context around that. I don't, I don't think they have changed, unless I have missed something. Um, but I think the suggestion was for each of the working groups to just always kind of reevaluate your focus areas, because just because we set them early meaning like three years ago, it doesn't mean that they need to become institutionalized in the project if, if they're not working or if metrics just don't seem to be, you know, finding their way into those focus areas. So, and Sean had pointed out that um, evolution has done this and risk and value. So other working groups have done this as well, so. Okay, I must have misunderstood. Uh, Justin sent an email around and I thought he said new focus areas, but I completely missed that. So my apologies. So anyway, there are the the uh, focus areas <laughs> for the DEI. the existing <laughs> ones. <laughs> the existing ones, just reinforcing, just reminding everyone that, the, that they're there. Um, so we'll move on to talk about the survey. Uh, Matt, do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so I just wanted to give people a heads up. So, right, we have been putting together a survey kind of through the DEI working group and with kind of an additional group that's helping kind of reflect on um, DEI in the CAS project as a whole. And so it's a survey about um, how the, the members of the chaos community um, feel that they're able to make contributions, how they feel included, um, kind of how they feel about um, DEI related issues with respect to the project. And so we had worked up the survey. It had to go through a university approval and that is pretty much done. And we're just kind of working out the final logistics of how to distribute the survey so that it really largely goes to chaos community members and not just <laughs> the internet where anybody could answer about the chaos project. So we're kind of working out ways to distribute that while still being attentive to um, all the PII related information. Um, so I think we've worked through that. So look for something soon. 
And if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Does anyone have questions um, for the DEI working group on what's going on there? Okay, we'll move on. Next Wait, up one, is- one more thing. We, got, we had one more badging, event badging request to come in. So, so we we'll surely, yes. I don't remember who, I just remember the number one. <laughs> one, that's a good easy number to remember. Yes. It's the first I prime. think you're slotted as a reviewer on that too, Matt. And Drew, is Drew on the call? I don't know. I don't see Drew today. Nope, okay. Okay, um, I guess we'll move on then to risk and I am gonna let Sean talk about that. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll run through risk real quick and then evolution. Uh, for risk, we have uh, talks proposed that we prepared in our last meeting last week uh, for OSS EU Seattle and OSPOCON. Um, we're actively developing dependency metrics during meetings in the upcoming weeks, uh, targeting the next release that we have. And our next meeting is at 2 p.m. Um, and I think that's 7 p.m. UTC on June 10th. But since I'm sharing my screen, I didn't Google the UTC time. So if I'm wrong about that, let me know. Do we have questions for Sean? I guess I have one. Um, yeah. so we, we had drafted proposals, but mm -hmm. did you end up submitting them? Because I know we were still. I haven't submitted any. I haven't submitted any yet because I'm um, holiday weekend and securing the named speakers. Oh yeah, that's what I was curious about because we had proposals yeah. but hadn't nailed down all the speakers. So right, yep. Okay, working well, on we'll that. Talk later. Yeah. And then for evolution, we're developing a new metric in the last few meetings uh, based on the concept of how contributor credit is granted on a project. Um, this credit involves a contribution actually doing something, requesting credit. Um, sometimes just making the commit or the pull request is the request for credit. Sometimes if you're tracking event participation or talks, then someone has to go request credit and then someone peer reviews the credit. Um, Drupal has a nice working example of how credit recognition is handled on their open source project. We're kind of using that as a model for uh, something in the for an evolution metric right now. And focus on the next release. Then the next meeting is June 9th at 9 a.m. CDT, 2 p.m. UTC, if my time zone conversions are accurate. Questions for Sean on evolution. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Uh, the next one up is value. Um, Vinod, do you want to talk about this? Yes. So for the value working group, we have been working on two metrics, one for the academic focus area, which is on the impact factor, and uh, which is like more about uh, uh, academician developing the software and what is the uh, impact of those contributions uh, for the academicians. And for organizational value, we have for worked on the organizational influence metric. So these two are in the development phase. And also in the value working group, we are preparing for a lightning talk for OSPOCON. And this is the work so far in the value working group. And our next meeting is on June 3rd at 9 a.m. Central time. I haven't done the conversion, so yeah. uh, I'm not sure about the other timings. What is the OSPOCON? Uh, so right now, so, I'll go ahead. Yeah, the OSPOCON talk was like, uh, uh, how, what can value working group, how value working group can be helpful to the uh, open source community? Like uh, this talk is based on the survey, which Elizabeth uh, arranged on the Twitter, uh, on that feedback, uh, small lightning talk. Gotcha. That's right. I remember. Okay. So this is, it's coming basically that survey, the Twitter survey yes. is this. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks.
Who has questions for Vinod? No one does. All right. No questions. Well, I, I did. I did. I just <laughs> asked <right>. it early. <laughs> Okay, uh, Common, who would like to chat about Common? So I, I'll just say that we have a, a kind of like the other working groups, we have a couple metrics that are moving forward real positively. I do think language distribution is ready for group review. And one of the words also getting close is, is called time waiting for submitter action. And that is programming language distribution, yeah. not like yeah. spoken language. Okay, who has questions for Matt about what's happening in the common working group? No one has questions for Matt, awesome. Uh, okay, so we're at the end of the agenda. 24 minutes in, not too shabby. Uh, who else has something to bring up before we dismiss everyone and use the rest of the time to plan Chaos Con for those on the planning committee? I think I'm pretty good right now. Um, oh, hey, I saw Venu, you joined. Can you hear me? Hi. Hey, do, can you, do you have your um, link to your old blog post that you used um, for Google Summer of Code? Um. Yeah, yeah, I have. Can you put that in the minutes? I, I thought it was really nicely done. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Maybe we could share that just like as an example. Okay. So I have uh, uh, like made reports out of it. So I'll put that report uh, reports link. Uh, uh, where do I have to put it? Just look in the, you see in the minutes, there's just a GSOC. Okay, okay, okay. See yeah, that? Got it. Thanks. Okay. Uh, hi, yeah. Matt. Hey, what's up? I am trying. Yeah, something, something just came over my mind for the common on the programming language uh, distribution. Yeah. What do you aim at capturing with this uh, metrics? Give me, give me a second, I'll go get the metric and I'll put it in here. That'll help describe it a little better. Oops. So I'm going to put it in the chat, Armstrong. It's also in the minutes now, too. Does that help? OK, yeah. So you want to look into a project, the kind of languages that are using, or are you aiming to see the let's say the prevalence of these languages over time. Yeah. Uh, so how, how the culture of computing itself is influencing them or something like that. Yeah, so I think I think we've captured, yeah, seeing the filters, time was certainly one of them. You know what I mean? So seeing how this would evolve over time. Okay. Like number of files by language, lines of code by language, which can be expressed as an absolute number or percentage. And then some example visualizations from Augur and Gamora Lab. Uh, feel free to contribute or add your name to the contributors list if you've made a contribution to this metric. We haven't historically done a perfect job keeping track of that. I think it's an important uh, metric that we can really run. Because for example, as you uh, speaking, you see like the culture of the time the complexity of computing might be putting a language, for example, Python on, a, on an advantage, just because of the libraries that it uses. 
that there are certain things that have been existing for a very long time, let's say in the language like Java, uh, yeah. JavaScript or Julia, that people are not mm -hmm. even aware of it. So how we give, give visibility of this thing can be really informative than just telling people what they already know. Mm -hmm. Or surprising them with things that are in their project they did not realize. And then this extends, um, is extended, I think, by the dependency work that the risk working group is taking on. Because once you're really, one, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah once you have some bill of materials, oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> Matt, you go. I was gonna say, I'm sorry, if you, if you, if you think the, what you were just talking about isn't captured, could you put a note in the okay. um, I'll metric? Take them, yeah. Yeah, just take a look at like, even just the description and the objectives, you know what I mean? That'd be helpful. Yeah. Cool, okay. thank you. Okay, anything else on anything else? Oh, I have uh, a few uh, updates about uh, Grimoire Lab. So uh, we have been uh, recently working on two more tools, uh, that is Sorting Hat and Bestiary. Sorting Hat is used for identity management. Uh, initially, we used to have a command line tool. Now we, we are uh, developing uh, a web app where you can add, delete, and manage all these identities using uh, you know, web interface. So, and yeah, and Bessery is uh, pretty much uh, used for configuring all these are moderate configurations. So yeah, uh, the work is going pretty slow. I mean, it's not like too rapid. So I just thought of you no know, informed note. It is, um... Is the sorting hat work? Is that part of the Google Summer of Code? Thing? Yeah, yeah. We have a student who will be working on uh, sorting hat. Cool. Thank you for that update, Benu. Um, does anyone have questions besides Matt, who already asked his? Any other questions for Benu? All right. Well, it is uh, about half past, so we can go ahead and end the regular meeting. We'll stop the recording and we can, whoever's on the chaos planning committee can just stick around and we, I'm